case is more brutal than the ones I usually cover, and as a result, viewer discretion is advised. There are no disturbing photographs used, nor are there graphic descriptions. However, some details of this case are disturbing simply because of the way the victim was found. The Rack Man, identified as Max Tansevsky. In 1993, it was believed that 37-year-old Max had set out on a gambling spree, which was pretty typical for his life. He was, in fact, known to travel up and down the Gold Coast on his sprees, but that wasn't abnormal at all. In the past, he always left for a few days and then he returned home, whether he was winning or losing. So after a few days, his family and friends became really worried about his safety. His girlfriend said he seemed to be completely normal the day he left their home in Newtown, Sydney, Australia. His girlfriend saw him leave their home on January 11, 1993. He didn't come home that night or any night thereafter. By the time he was reported missing, his family and friends had become alarmed. It wasn't like him not to return. Also, he was just an average gambler, as far as anyone knew. He didn't spend more than he could afford to spend, and he wasn't connected to any illegal entity. Others, however, have stated that he did have some gambling debt, but the amount was unknown. Just before he disappeared in 1993, he withdrew $1,800, which would be equal to more than $3,000 today, so not a small amount to most of us. This was his typical gambling withdrawal. Years would go on and Max was never heard from again. The case would quickly grow cold and stay that way for the next year and a half. Through the perception of Max's family, it never warmed up. On August 11, 1994, a fisherman named Mark Peterson was out on a boat named the Lady Marion. He felt a tug on his fishing net while fishing the Hawkesbury River. Rather than sea life, he discovered he'd caught something pretty horrifying. Inside of the fishing net was a body wrapped in plastic with a noose around his neck and tied to a handmade metal cross with metal wire. The only thing on his body was a pack of cigarettes and a lighter. Because of the time in the water, the specifics were hard to nail down. They believe he was either Italian or Austrian, short of stature 5'2 to 5'4, likely between the ages of 21 and 46. He had straight teeth and no fillings. He was wearing an everything Australia polo and a no sweat branded tracksuit bottoms. His hair was brown and he appeared to be a smoker. The cross is described as two cylindrical bars that were welded into an L design. It's believed they chose this because it was very restrictive of his movement. And that is perhaps why they describe it as being custom made for him. Even more horrifying, he may still have been alive when he went into the water though considering the noose, that isn't a given. Evidence also showed he'd been hit in the head. Some articles state that the cause of death is unknown. Others state it was blunt force trauma. His fingerprints were gone because his body had been in the water for a year and a half. No matter what his ultimate cause of death was, it just seemed like overkill and of a personal nature. Adding insult to injury, his identity would be unknown for the next 24 years before DNA returned his name. They had considered that Max could be the man dubbed Rackman, but there were also two other candidates for this dough. As a result, DNA was the only option. The waterway he was found in was close to Max's home, and nowhere near where he was thought to have gone gambling. The Gold Coast was a nine-hour drive from his home, but instead he was only 45 minutes away that whole time. It's believed he died on or near the day he went missing. Sadly, his name scratches only the surface of this case. The very manner of his death speaks to a greater story rather than suggesting it was some random act of violence, although that can't completely be ruled out. Overkill such as this usually indicates great anger, especially since there's no other victim who has been found in the same circumstances. So the question remains as to why. It's possible he owed money to someone, although generally loan sharks don't kill off their one avenue to payment. If he had been working with the police and crossed someone in that way, it never came out. Police originally expected that specific killing to be gangland style, or as the result of a religious cult. Further questions include who had the ability to weld the metal. Because of the size and weight, it is likely more than one person involved. What was the purpose of the cross? Was it torture or was it an anchor? Nothing about this case is logical. With each detail, there's more possibility as to what may have happened. 
Any current information is urged to be reported to Crime Stoppers to help keep the case moving forward and provide justice and closure for his family. Was missing for 25 years and spent 24 years as a John Doe. The Boulder John Doe, October of 1993. The Boulder, Colorado John Doe was a man found at the base of a rock formation in Chattaquiwa Park in Boulder, Colorado in October of 1993. It was a black man, around 5'7", and he wore his black hair in a short, flat-top style. He had a receding hairline and a light beard, as well as mustache stubble. He had a scar that went through his left eyebrow. His jacket was a size medium, which was a white nylon windbreaker with blue trim, along with a digital Casio watch. A gym bag with articles of clothing and personal hygiene items was found nearby. He was likely 25 to 40 years of age, meaning his date of birth was around 1953 to 1968. When I originally wrote this up and did research, he had a postmortem, but his name as site is blank now, but still in existence. They pull a page when identification is made, which makes me think this one is nearing completion and has possibly been matched. The police believe he was a local transient and it's possible he succumbed to the elements. The Boulder John Doe has gone unidentified for 28 years. That's it for today. Thanks everybody. Take care of yourselves and each other.